Hello, Tobin and Nora. We have another reading to do today. And some of these books we have at home, and of course, like I always tell you, you may have them when you want them. And some of these I got from the library. So maybe you can check those out sometime. Now, this one, now I know about birds. This is kind of a science book. It's from Scholastic. It's by Melvin and Gilda Berger. And it just tells you a little bit about uh, some various birds that you may run into in your area or when you travel. And the, the, the um, writing in here sounds kind of maybe like it's for a, a very, very small child. But just, just ignore that part because there's some interesting things in here too. See the birds. I hope you can see those pictures. And if you can't, uh, you can look at this book when we see you. Some were big. Did you know an ostrich is about twice as tall as you are? Some are little. That's a hummingbird. We have hummingbirds right out on our porch right now, drinking some uh, nectar that we make for them. Did you know a hummingbird is only a little bigger than your thumb? Some are brightly colored. Some are dark. But all birds have feathers, and I'm sure you've seen pictures of peacocks. Whoa, they are beautiful, aren't they? Uh, your great-grandparents, Dick and Libby, used to have peacocks. Feathers help keep birds warm and help them fly. And there is a duck. Oh, he is so cute. And all birds have wings. Did you know airplane wings are the same shape as bird wings? But not all birds can fly. This one, I believe, is a kiwi bird. Some, they all have wings, but there are a few that cannot fly. Pengu penguins swim, but they can't fly. Ostriches run, but can't fly. Birds eat a lot of different foods. Some eat bugs, some eat berries, some eat worms, some eat fish. Most birds build nests, but all, not all nests are alike. Those are really interesting looking nests. If I remember correctly, these nests are built with mud and straw, high in a tree. And this tree has thorns. That helps protect the baby birds from snakes and things. Some nests are high in trees. Some are on the ground. Now, we have at least two birds in this area that build nests on the ground. Maybe more. Uh, that is the killdeer and the uh, meadowlark. Did you know most birds lay a few eggs at a time? And there are three. That's a beautiful blue. I think that must be a robin's nest. Or robin's eggs are that color. Mother birds lay eggs in the nest. Birds' eggs are many colors and sizes. Now think about it. Think how big an ostrich is. And their eggs, I think, are about that big. Really, really big. And hummingbirds, so tiny. The eggs are about like that. Very, very tiny. Usually the mother bird sits on the eggs. Sometimes mother and father birds take turns warming the eggs. But sometimes the father bird keeps the eggs warm. And that is, uh, I forget what type of penguin that is. But he's a really, he has a really odd looking face. But that is a penguin, and the fathers sit on the eggs to keep them warm. Soon the baby is ready to hatch. Crack! Here comes the baby bird. Getting out of his shell. I hope you get to see that sometime. Maybe you already have. The mother and father feed the baby. And that's an American robin, I'm sure. Baby birds grow very fast. 
the young birds learn to fly. Fly away safely. That is some sort of crane. I'm not sure which species of crane that is, but it's a crane. I like that. I think I'll try to draw that picture. Oh, another favorite, the riverbank by Kenneth Graham from The Wind in the Willows. If we can figure out how to put a VHS tape onto a DVD, then we can have that movie again. You may have it. Spring. Mole was tired of cleaning. He had swept his house. He had dusted his house. He had cleaned all morning long. How he wanted to be out in the fresh spring air. So Mole ran outside. He felt the warm sun. He felt the soft breeze. This is great, said Mole. This is better than cleaning. Mole ran and jumped. He ran across meadows. He ran past bushes. He ran and ran and ran. Then Mole stopped. He could not go any farther. There was a river in his way. A river? Mole had never seen a river before. Mole sat down to look at the river. On the other side, he saw a hole in the riverbank. What was that? Inside the hole was a tiny light. The light twinkled, then it winked right at Mole. It was an eye. It was the water rat's eye. The water rat. The water rat came out of his house. Hello, Mole, called the water rat. Hello, rat, called Mole. Rat got into his boat. He rowed over to Mole. He helped Mole get in. What a day Mole was having. Oh, I've never been in a boat before, Mole told Rat. What, cried Rat. Rat could not imagine life without boats. How about we take a trip down the river today, Rat said. Mole loved the idea. Let's go, said Mole. A picnic. Rat rode home and packed a picnic lunch, then he and Mole set off. As Rat ro rode, he told Mole about the river, about the smells, the seasons, and the food. It's my world, and I don't want any other, said Rat. Mole agreed that it sounded great. But isn't it lonely, asked Mole, just you and the river and no one else? Very soon, Mole would answer that for himself. Down the river, Rat landed the boat. Mole spread out their picnic. There were, they were eating when Otter swam by. He stopped to chat with Mole and Rat. Otter loved to chat. Then they saw shy Badger in the bushes, but he rushed away when he saw them all. Badger does not like get-togethers, Rat told Mole. Then Toad sailed by. He was in his brand new boat. He was wearing brand new clothes. Toad liked new things. Rat waved to Toad. How wrong Mole had been. The river was not lonely at all. Home again. Soon all the food was eaten. The sun was sinking low. Matt packed up, excuse me, Mole packed up the picnic basket. He and Rat got into the boat. As Rat rode home, Mole got to thinking. Rowing looked like fun. He was sure he could do it. Ratty, Mole said, please, I want to roll now. Row now. He jumped up. He took the oars from Rat. Mole tried to roll, but he missed the water. He fell backward and splash! The boat tipped over. Rat laughed. He was right at home in the water, but Mole was not. He could not swim. Rat helped Mole to shore. Then Rat dived for the boat and the basket. Soon Mole and Rat were on their way again. Mole felt terrible. I'm very sorry, Mole said. Rat was not angry at all. In fact, he invited Mole to stay at his house for a while. I'll teach you to row and to swim and all about river life, said Rat. Mole was so happy he did not know how to thank Rat. But Mole did know one thing. He had two great new friends, Rat and the river. And that's a very nice picture. Okay, now to the one that I think is so clever. Nuffle Bunny 2, the case of mistaken identity. Boy, 
Okay. One morning, not so long ago, Trixie took a walk with her daddy. By now, Trixie really knew how to talk. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to show Amy, and then I'll show Meg, and and then I'll show Margo, and then I'll show Jane, and then I'll show Leela, and then I'll show Rebecca, and then I'll show Noah, and then I'll show Robbie, and then I'll show Toshi, and then I'll show Casey, and then I'll show Connie, and then I'll show Parker, and then I'll show Bryant, and then, and talk and talk. Trixie was excited because she was taking her one-of-a-kind Nuffle Bunny someplace very special. She is very excited. Look, come on. School. Trixie couldn't wait to show Nuffle Bunny to Mrs. Greengrove and all her friends in pre-K. Ooh, that's the grade that Nora's in, isn't it? But just as her daddy kissed her goodbye, Trixie saw Sonia. Uh-oh, what do you think Sonia has? Uh-huh. She has the same Nuffle Bunny. Suddenly, Trixie's one-of-a-kind Nuffle Bunny wasn't so one-of-a-kind anymore. The morning did not go well. Knuffle, Knuffle. Trixie has her own way of pronouncing this. Nuffle, Nuffle. And Sophia has her own way of pronouncing it. They're going to argue about how to pronounce Nuffle Bunny. I say it's Nuffle. The afternoon was worse. Uh-oh, what had to happen? The teacher had to take the Nuffle Bunnies away because the girls were fighting about the pronunciation. When the school bell rang, Mrs. Greengrove returned the Nuffle Bunnies. And the day got better. Then, before she knew it, it was time to go home. Trixie ate her dinner, devoured her dessert, brushed her teeth, and tried to escape the mommy and daddy robots from Planet Snurp. At half past bedtime, Trixie was tucked in. But a few hours later, Trixie realized something. Trixie marched into her mommy and daddy's room and said, That is not my bunny! Trixie's daddy tried to explain what 2.30 a.m. means. He asked, Can we deal with this in the morning? Trixie's daddy went to the phone. Before he even made it down the stairs, the phone rang. Ring! We have your bunny, said a man's voice on the other end. We have yours, replied Trixie's daddy. Arrangements were made. What do you think they're going to do? It's late, late, late at night. Are they going to get dressed and go meet and exchange bunnies? Let's see. Trixie and her daddy rushed across the neighborhood. Look at her eyes. Trixie's really worried. She cannot wait to get her own Nuffle Bunny back. Trixie did not want to be late. Neither did Sonia. There was an exchange. And the Nuffle Bunnies were back where they belonged. I was so worried about my bunny, said Sonia. So was I, Trixie replied. Then they both said, I'm glad you got your bunny back at the exact same time. And that is how Trixie found her first best friend. Okay, I think somewhere back there I called her Sophia, but it is Sonia. I'm sorry. Epilogue. That means what happened after the main story. The next morning, both Trixie and Sonia rushed to school. The new best friends had a lot of catching up to do. Do you want to play with my Nuffle Bunny? Sure. Do you want to play with mine? Okay. So, 
I hope if you want to see this book up close and see all these wonderful old photos, I hope you go to the library. Nuffle Bunny 2, A Case of Mistaken Identity by Mo Will. 